faces, worn out places, worn out faces, bright and early for the daily races, going nowhere, going nowhere. The tears are filling up their glasses, no expression, no Drown my sorrow, no tomorrow, no tomorrow. Long before September 11th, a small, influential group of neoconservatives here in Washington had wanted to see the United States transform into a sort of benevolent ruler, unchallenged, astride the world. And long before George W. Bush was elected, they sat down and they wrote down a manifesto. The document was effectively a charter of the project for a new American century, a neoconservative think tank in Washington. The founding members included Donald Rumsfeld, Dick Cheney, uh, Wolfowitz, Paul Wolfowitz of the Defense Department, uh, Richard Pearl, head of the uh, Defense Advisory Board, um, Louis Libby, Cheney's chief of staff, uh, uh, John Bolton, Under Secretary of State for uh, Arms Control. Uh, Ellie Cohen, uh, who's on the Defense Policy Board. Much of what these men wanted is coming true. They urged that the U.S. abandon the anti-ballistic missile treaty. It has. They wanted establishment of more permanent U.S. military bases abroad. That is happening in the Philippines and in Georgia and will likely happen in Iraq. They urged regime change as a goal of foreign wars, not just in Iraq. They wanted the U.S. as a global constabulary, their word, unburdened by the U.N. or world opinion, preventing any challenge to U.S. dominance. But, they wrote, a year before September 11th, such aspirations are unlikely to be realized without a catastrophic and catalyzing event, like a new Pearl Harbor. September 2000, the project for a new American century, a neoconservative think tank whose members include Dick Cheney, Donald Rumsfeld, Jeb Bush, and Paul Wolfowitz releases their report entitled Rebuilding America's Defenses. In it, they declare that the process of transformation, even if it brings revolutionary change, is likely to be a long one, absent some catastrophic and catalyzing event, like a new Pearl Harbor. Is this a conspiracy? Quite the opposite. It is a high-profile project known as the Project for the New American Century. People like Dick Cheney, Donald Rumsfeld, Richard Pearl are the major players among politicians, right-wing thinkers, militarists and industrialists in the creation of the project. The project is a neoconservative manifesto which includes in its toolbox the unbridled use of war in clearing a path for U.S. interests. The will to attack Iraq came entirely from this visible yet sinister group. September the 11th was merely the pretext. Bush is merely the figurehead. The North American Aerospace Defense Command is charged with the direct control of the military agency. NORAD was founded in 1957, and generals always had the power to shoot down or intercept hijacked aircraft. But on June 1st, 2001, just three months before 9-11, Dick Cheney ordered Donald Rumsfeld to allow him to take control of NORAD itself and the shoot-down procedure and remove that power from the generals so they could do nothing. Here is a copy of the memorandum from Rumsfeld to the Joint Chiefs telling them they no longer have any authority. Uh, during the time that the airplane coming in to the Pentagon uh, there was a young man who would come in and say to the vice president, the, the plane is 50 miles out, the plane is 30 miles out. And when it got down to the plane is 10 miles out, uh, the young man also said to the vice president, do the orders still stand? And uh, the vice president turned and whipped his neck around and said, of course the orders still stand. Have you heard anything to the contrary? USA Today reports that in the two years before the attacks on September the 11th, NORAD conducted exercises using hijacked airliners as weapons. And one target 
was the World Trade Center. We knew he hated us. But there was uh, nobody in our government, at least, and I don't think the prior government that could envision flying airplanes in the buildings. I don't think anybody could have predicted that these people would take an airplane and slam it into the World Trade Center, take another one and slam it into the Pentagon, uh, that they would try to use an airplane as a missile, a hijacked airplane as a missile. But Condoleezza Rice is wrong. Had she looked, Dr. Rice might have found in the files of the intelligence community what the 9-11 Commission would uncover. The attack she deemed unimaginable had in fact been imagined repeatedly. Planes either packed with explosives or otherwise. Twelve times in the seven years before 9-11, the CIA reported that hijackers might use airplanes as weapons. That the president was aware uh, that there were issues inside the United States. He, he talked to people about this, but I don't remember the Al-Qaeda cells as being something that we were told we needed to do something about. Isn't it a fact, Dr. Rice, that the August 6 PDB warned against possible attacks in this country. And I ask you whether you recall the title of that PDB. I believe the title was Bin Laden Determined to Attack Inside the United States. War games on the day that mimicked um, the actual attack scenario in every aspect. And then that afterwards they claimed we couldn't have imagined that such a thing would happen, although it was exactly the scenario that we were rehearsing. Hijackings, crashes into buildings, um, you know, an emergency in New York City, all this was being rehearsed on the day as part of a plan. So when they say we couldn't have imagined it, they're lying. July 24th, 2001. Larry A. Silverstein, who already owned World Trade Center 7, signs a $3.2 billion, 99-year lease on the entire World Trade Center complex six weeks before 9-11. Included in the lease is a $3.5 billion insurance policy specifically covering acts of terrorism. Silverstein faced the daunting task of having to remove the illegal asbestos that covered every steel beam in the Twin Towers. This job would have cost over a billion dollars. Silverstein, a commercial real estate tycoon with international political connections, acquired a 99-year lease on the World Trade Center complex in the spring of 2001. Throughout the summer, he reworked the insurance policies on his new property, making sure that it was covered for acts of terrorism. Explicit in the lease agreement was Silverstein's right to rebuild the complex if it were destroyed. After 9-11, Mr. Silverstein fought his insurers in court to obtain double his policy limits for the destruction of his property, maintaining that the double hijacking constituted two disasters caused by terrorists, not just one. He won and was awarded over seven billion dollars. Silverstein changed the company responsible for the security of the complex. The new company he hired was Securitcom, now Stratasec. George W. Bush's brother, Marvin Bush, was on its board of directors, their cousin, Wirt Walker III, was its CEO. According to public records, not only did Securitcom provide electronic security for the World Trade Center, it also covered Dulles International Airport and United Airlines, two key players in the attacks. The towers required more than a billion in renovations and improvements, most of which related to removal and replacement of building materials declared to be health hazards in the years since the towers were built, such as the fireproof asbestos that coated the structure's steel. On several occasions the Port Authority attempted to get permits to demolish the building for liability reasons, but was turned down due to the known asbestos problem. Further, the only reason the building was still standing until 9-11 because it was too costly to disassemble the Twin Towers floor by floor, since the Port Authority was prohibited legally from demolishing the buildings. The projected cost to disassemble the towers, 15 billion. WTC Building 7 was a part of the WTC complex, and covered under the same insurance policy.